All right, ready. In today's session, we will start a new unit uh, which speaks about uh, the human brain and the human intelligence. So, what is the meaning of an intelligent? Can anyone identify intelligence? Something that needs a brain. Something that needs a brain. Okay. Nice to see our knowledge okay bravo anything else so how can we say that someone is intelligent <laughs> when he uses his brain to do something amazing right So, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, uh, the founder of Alibaba, the, and all of uh, Ahmad Zweil, for example. So, we can name those people intelligent ones simply because they can use their brains and the knowledge they have in order to do something very amazing. Consequently, we can say that, oh, they are intelligent. So simply intelligence means using the information, the knowledge, and the ability and the capacity of your brain in order to do something very, very amazing, okay? The first reading comprehension in uh, this unit is an informative model. Informative model. The meaning of an informative model or an informative text is a type of writing in which an author presents facts and details. So all we need to know right now is some facts and details about uh, the human brain. So to speak about the human brain, we will know some facts and details. And this is the type of writing that we are gonna develop in the performance-based assessment at the end of this unit. So we're gonna also learn about how to write an informative uh, essay. And as we read, uh, we need to look at the way the ideas are introduced and the facts and details also are marked okay so that we can determine the key ideas and the details yes Tamer. Uh, what was the beat again 344 okay Okay, Hussein, can you start? Paragraph number one. Okay. The famous scientist James Watson summarized it this way. The brain boggles the mind. The human brain is truly impressive. It weighs only about three pounds, but controls everything a person does, ever has done, and ever will do physically and truly intellectually and emotionally. No computer even comes close to having the brain's abilities. The brain controls a person's action and reactions and survival functions such as breathing. It also has the ability to think, remember, process information and learn new things. So first, uh, our famous scientist whose name was James Watson, uh, Watson summarized it. So, summarized what? Summarized that he refers to? Brain. The human brain. So, James Watson summarized mm -hmm. the human brain by saying, well, the brain puggles the mind. The brain is truly impressive. The brain weighs only about three pounds. Yet, 
it controls everything that a person does in the present, has ever done in the past, or will ever do in the future, physically, intellectually, and even emotionally. All of this are being done only by our brain. No computer can even come close to having the brain's ability, because simply what we have is very tremendous, very amazing. Really, if we can unlock our own capacity of uh, uh, the brain, we will do some amazing things. No one can even do that. The brain itself controls the person's actions and reaction and survival function, such as breathing. I believe none of us, none of us, control his breathing, and we just breathe naturally, and we just leave this process to our play. Brain. It also has the ability to think, remember, process information, and learn new things. All of this is included in our own brain, and without it, we will we will be nothing but uh, some animals. And this is actually the only difference between humans and animals. Our brain. Uh, Mr. Uh, Turkey. Do you have a mic? Yes, teacher, I have a mic. Okay, can you start by reading paragraph number two? Yes. The brain is one part of the central nervous system. The system that controls all of the all of the body's activities. The central nervous system is made of up of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is protected by the skull and the spinal cords run through the vertebrae of the back, the bones that make up the spine. The spinal cord transmits messages between the brain and the other parts of the body through nerve cells called neurons. If a person decides to pick a book from the shelf, a voluntary action, the brain sends that message to the arm and hand through the spinal cord. And if a person touches it, touches a hot surface and burns his or her hand on involuntary actions, the nerve cells in the hand send a pain message to the brain through the spinal cord. So simply, what we're speaking about in paragraph number two is our nervous system. Our nervous system controls our body. So, have you seen this, the nervous system before in a human's body? So, here we have the brain. Okay, the brain receives all the message through the spinal cord, and here are some neurons. So, when some, let's see that in this image, for example, uh, let's see that uh, you smell something that is very, very bad. So the brain will send you a message. So your nose will first send a message via the spinal cord and the nerves to the brain. And the brain will tell you to stop breathing. If, for example, you touch something that is very, very hot, okay? So all of these neurons will just send or transmit a message to the brain. The brain will receive it and then resend it again so that to tell your hand to move away quickly. Okay, so that's our body and how it works. First, you touch something, you smell, you eat, and use your senses to receive a message. You transmit this message to the brain. And then the brain tells your organ what to do or what not to do. Okay? And that's so fascinating, actually. And hold on this process, sending the message and resending a message once again. This takes just parts of a second. Very, very quick. And that's so amazing, actually. So, we have the nervous system, which controls our body's activities which tells us what to do or what not to do. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain and the spinal cord. 
legs one for example bigger the brain and the spinal cord that's our central nervous system So the brain and the spinal cord is what is made of our central nervous system. The brain is protected by the skull itself and the spinal cord and runs through the vertebra of the back. These are the vertebra of the back, of course, here in our back. And it is so protected because if simply anything happening here or any cut or anything, the person will become paralyzed. So it's very, very protected. The spinal cord itself transmits the messages between the brain and the other parts of the body throughout the nerve cells called neurons. So the neurons takes in and out messages from the organs to the brain and vice versa. If a person decides to pick up something from the shelf or he touches something very hot and or very cold and so on and paragraph number three muhammad al falah do you have a mic khalid al khalifa yes teacher uh, teacher oh. Later here. Paragraph number three, Khalid. Okay. okay. Messages travels through the neurons in the spinal cord at speed of more than 150 miles per hour. The human brain never stops working even when a person is asleep, as well as transmitting messages through the spinal cord. The neurons transmit messages from one part of the brain to another. There are approximately 85 billion of these cells in the brain alone. In the brain alone. Neurons send messages through tiny branch like structures that connect to other neurons in different parts of the brain, as well as other parts of the brain. The points where neurons meet the and transmit information to each other are called synapses. Each neuron may, may be connected to as many as 10,000 other neurons, resulting in one in more than 100 trillion synapses in a single brain. All right, and here no one can say anything but uh, how magnificent is our creator. So we have a constant stream of messages that travel throughout the neurons into the spinal cord at the speed more than 150 miles per hour which is great speed actually so you are speaking about in this very small body you have something that travels with that speed so how tall are you guys one meter and a half one meter sixty, two meters, two meters ten, which is uh, most uh, or the tallest person on earth. And in that small body, you have something that travels and moves by the speed of one hundred fifty miles per hour. And this thing or these messages, they never stop working ever, because consequently and uh, forever, uh, once you. Uh, once you were born, actually, these messages never stop uh, sending messages to the brain uh, so that you can control your breathing, your uh, pressure, uh, and all of the other uh, vital uh, uh, processes inside your body. Even when you are asleep, actually, you still uh, send and receive messages. All your brain does it uh, for you, actually, as well as transmitting messages uh, throughout the spinal Code, neurons also transmit messages from one part to another. There are approximately 85 billion of these neurons or these cells. Just imagine each of our body contains approximately 85 billion cells of these in just one singular brain. Wow. Neurons send messages through 
tiny branches like uh, structure that connects to other neurons in different parts of our brain as well as uh, other parts of uh, the body. The points where uh, neurons meet and transmit information to each other are called uh, synapses. Each uh, neuron may be connected to as many as uh, 110,000 of these uh, neurons, uh, resulting in more than uh, 100 trillion synapses in a single brain. So that's awesome, actually. All right, paragraph number four, you hear? Okay, paragraph number four. Although a person cannot increase the amount of neutrons in his or her brain, learning new things increases the amount of synapses, change the structure, uh, actually changes, wait, I skipped the line. Uh, oh, learning oh. new things, uh, learning new things increases the number of synapse connections between them. Learning and edu learning and education today actually changes the ch structure of the human brain. That structure changes every time a person learns, and every time a person has a new thought or memory. The more a person learns, the more there is to think about, and there is more to think about. Uh, the more there is to remember, as a result, the connections between neurons get stronger, and the brain uh, and the brain is able to function more efficiently or effectively. It processes things, analyzes, and stores information more quickly and, produ uh, and productively uh, than it did before. These connections were made. Neutrons are just cells, and every uh, and everything and everything a person knows as a result of the connections between them. All right, so simply we were speaking about how uh, these uh, neurons were made and do they really grow and uh, grow stronger or uh, they just uh, are uh, born with the person and never change. Of course, to speak about that, a uh, person cannot increase uh, the amount of uh, neurons in his or her brain. So once you are born with uh, that, 100 trillion, you cannot uh, make them 110 trillion. That's it. So you cannot increase them. Okay, learning new things increases the number of uh, synapses, the connection between them. But uh, the neurons uh, themselves cannot be uh, grow or uh, cannot be increased. Uh, yet uh, the synap uh, synapses, uh, the connections between uh, that transmitted uh, the information among the neurons uh, can be increased. Uh, by learning new things. So our learning and our education changes the structure of our brain. So the structure changes every time a person learns something or every time a person has a new thought or a memory. So the more a person learns, the more there is to be to think about. And of course, there are more there is uh, to think about uh, the more uh, there is uh, to remember as a result the connection between neurons uh, get stronger so once you learn more and more and more uh, the connection between your uh, neurons becomes very 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 strong uh, and the brain itself uh, is able to function more effectively it processes things analyzes and stores the information more quickly and more productively than it did before so these connections were made before. So simply once you learn more, your brain functions more effectively. So neurons are just cells and everything a person knows is the result of the connection between those cells. Last but not least, paragraph number five. Tamer. Yes. That's going to be paragraph number five. Oh, okay. Scientists have gained a wealth of knowledge about the human brain. But there is a lot they do not yet understand. Uh, the new, uh, the neurologist, uh, the neurologist Santiago Ramon uh, Cajal, for example, compared the brain to a world of an explored continent with great 
stretches of unknown uh, of unknown territory. Even so, new discoveries continually increase our knowledge of how the brain functions and how people learn. So simply, another scientist that have gained wealth uh, of knowledge about the human brain. Eh? So there is the, a lot uh, they do not yet understand about our brain and how it functions. Eh? The neurologist is, uh, we have a man called Santiago Ramon uh, by Kajal. He compares our human brain uh, to a rolling unexplored continent. Just imagine if uh, there is some other continent on our planet and yet uh, is the, to be discovered. No one has discovered it uh, so far uh, with great stretches uh, of unknown territory. Even so, okay, new discoveries uh, continually increase our knowledge of how the brain functions and how people learn. Some people think that intelligence is the crowning achievement of evolution. Well, if that's true, there should be more intelligent creatures on the planet Earth, but to the best of our knowledge, we're the only ones. The dinosaurs were on the Earth for roughly 200 million years, and to the best of our knowledge, not a single dinosaur became intelligent. We humans, modern humans, have been on the Earth for roughly 100,000 years. Only a tiny fraction of the 4.5 billion years that the Earth has been around. So you come to the rather astounding conclusion that intelligence is not really necessary. That Mother Nature has done perfectly well with non-intelligent creatures for millions of years, and that we as intelligent creatures are the new kid on the block. And so then you begin to wonder, how did we become intelligent? What separated us from the animals? Well, there are basically three ingredients, at least three, that help to propel us to become intelligent. One is the opposable thumb. You need a tentacle, a claw, an opposable thumb in order to manipulate the environment. So that's one of the ingredients of intelligence, to be able to change the world around you. Second is eyesight. But the eyesight of a predator, we have eyes to the front of our face, not to the side of our face, and why? Animals with eyes at the front of their face are predators, lions, tigers, and foxes. Animals with eyes at the side of their face are prey, and they are not as intelligent like a rabbit. We say dumb bunny and smart as a fox. And there's a reason for that, because the fox is a predator. It has to learn how to ambush. It has to learn how to have stealth, camouflage. It has to psych out the enemy and anticipate the motion of the enemy that is its prey. If you're a dumb bunny, all you have to do is run. And the third basic ingredient is language. Because you have to be able to communicate your knowledge to the next generation. And to the best of our knowledge, animals do not communicate knowledge to their offspring other than by simply uh, communicating certain primitive motions. There's no book. There's no language, there's no culture by which animals can communicate their knowledge to the next generation. And so we think that's how the brain evolved. We have an opposable thumb, we have a language of maybe five to 10,000 words, and we have eyesight, that is stereo eyesight, the eyesight of a predator, and predators seem to be smarter than prey. And then you ask another question, how many animals on the earth satisfy these three basic ingredients? And then you come to the astounding conclusion, the answer is almost none. So perhaps there's a reason why we became intelligent and the other animals did not. They did not have the basic ingredients that would one day propel us to become intelligent. Then the next question asked in Planet of the Apes and asked in any number of science fiction movies is, can you accentuate intelligence? Can you take an ape and make the ape intelligent? Well, believe it or not, the answer could be yes. We are 98.5% genetically equivalent to a chimpanzee. Only a handful of genes separate us from the chimps, and yet we live twice as long, and we have thousands of words in our vocabulary. Chimps can have maybe just a few hundred. 
And we've isolated many of those genes that separate us from the chimpanzees. For example, the ASP gene governs the size of the crane, cranial capacity, so that by monkeying with just one gene, you can literally double the size of the brain case and the brain itself. And so in the future, not today, but in the future, we may use gene therapy to begin the process of making perhaps a chimpanzee intelligent. We know the genes that will increase the size of the brain. We've isolated now the genes that give you manual dexterity by which you can make tools. We have found the genes which give you the ability to articulate thousands of words. And so it may be possible to tinker with the genome of a chimpanzee so that they have a larger brain case, they have better manual dexterity, and they have the ability to articulate a larger vocabulary. But then what do you get? You get a primate that looks very similar to a human. And so my personal attitude is, why bother? We already have humans, just look outside the door. So why bother to manipulate a, a chimpanzee? Because as you make a chimpanzee more and more intelligent, it becomes more and more human-like with a vocabulary, with vocal cords, with manual dexterity, with a larger brain case, and a spine to support a larger brain case. That's called a human. For just sixty-seven dollars, can... it was paid three hundred forty-four and three hundred forty-five. Six. Any questions so far? Grade not uh, grade eight. Don't take it. Okay, let's just. 